What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Flippin' Bats. It is Tuesday, meaning it is Otani Tuesday. This week in Shohei Otani news, we're also going to update top three front runners for the major awards, MVP and Cy Young. So some fun stuff there, as well as buy or sell, as always, on Tuesday. But this is going to be a fun one. It is Tuesday. Let's get to it. Let's go. A high fly ball, deep center field. It is gone. Home run. And a huge bat flip to celebrate. All right, Ben, start the show already. Today is a big day because not only is it Otani Tuesday here on Flippin' Bats, but it is the trade deadline day. It happens Later this afternoon, it will be done. A lot of the major stuff will be happening throughout the day today, which is why we will have a live special episode trade deadline show happening right when the deadline ends. 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, we will be going live. So everything you need to know, you'll be able to hear it here. But this is going to be a blast of a day. The trade deadline is always a lot of fun. And this episode is going to be a lot of fun, too. And we're going to get it started with my favorite segment of all time this week in Shohei Otani news. We're going to talk about his dominant start on the mound that puts him in more historic territory. And I'm going to do a full breakdown Shohei Otani versus Aaron Judge MVP conversation. Now let's get to it with his start on Thursday. Another dominant start. Six innings, two earned runs, 11 strikeouts. 11 more strikeouts on the mound for Shohei, which now gives him seven games this year with 11 or more strikeouts. No MLB pitcher in the last 20 years has had more in the first 99 games of a season. Nobody in 20 years. And Shohei, the pitcher, has done that. 10 strikeouts or more in six consecutive. Angels pitchers with 10 plus strikeouts in six straight starts. That's Nolan Ryan and Shohei Otani. End of the list. That's it. Shohei is now in that territory. Six straight games with 10 or more strikeouts. That's dominance. That's unbelievable. His ERA is still well under three at a 2.8. Six straight starts for Shohei with 10 or more strikeouts. Only pitchers in history with longer streaks. This is outside of just the Angels. Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson, Chris Sale twice, Garrett Cole, and Justin Verlander. That's it. In the history of the game, pretty decent category to be in right there. That's unbelievable. Ten strikeout games by the Angels pitchers in history. Him and Nolan Ryan. Now listen to this. This year, he's done it nine times. 10K games by Angels pitchers. This season, Shohei Otani has nine All other pitchers combined for the Angels have one. One to his nine. Since June 22nd, the start of his streak, Otani leads all pitchers in strikeouts with 68 in just 39 innings. 68 strikeouts in 39 innings. His strikeout rate this year, 13.14. Only player over 13 for starters and is also the MLB leader and intentional walks drawn. So not only in all of baseball does he have the best strikeout to walk ratio at 13.14. Oh, by the way, he's also drawing the most walks intentionally on the offensive side of things. Adding on to that this past week, he homered again on Saturday. His 22nd home run of the season. 22. Now, if you look around, he has 22 home runs. That's more home runs than Vladimir Guerrero Jr., 
Juan Soto, who won the home run derby, Jose Ramirez, and obviously a, a lot of other names. He's in the top 15 in all of Major League Baseball in home runs, top 10 in the American League, 22 homers. He did that on Saturday. That 22 homer got him to 115 on his career. He is now third. He, he has been third on the list of Japanese-born players in all-time home runs. He's now only two behind Ichiro, who had 117 in his career. Hideki Matsui is the leader at 175 career home runs. So Shohei will soon move into that second spot. Look at this tweet. Shohei Otani AL rankings. Fourth in strikeouts. Garrett Cole is third. Ninth in home runs. He's top 10 in strikeouts on the mound and home runs at the plate. This is remarkable. So I wanted to really look at and, and do a deep dive into what kind of category this puts him in, in, in terms of his career. So through his first 50 career starts as a pitcher and 500 career games, Shohei Otani has more strikeouts than Jacob deGrom had, a lower ERA than Garrett Cole, more home runs than Ted Williams, more RBIs than Ken Griffey Jr. Just think about that. This stretch he's on right now, on the mound is all time. It's historic. So Shohei Otani, the pitcher, is currently doing historic things. I feel like last year I talked a little bit more about the hitter Shohei. This year could even be arguably more impressive. And it's because of what he's doing on the pitching side. Offensively, the power numbers aren't quite there, but he's still got over 20. He's still on pace for well over 30 home runs, but pitching wise, he's been light years better than he was last year. Since June 22nd, he's drawn 30 walks and he's allowed eight himself. He's hit seven home runs and he's allowed three himself and he's scored 13 runs and allowed 10 himself. Since June 22nd, he's only allowed 10 runs. So that leads me into the conversation of Shohei Otani versus Aaron Judge for the MVP award. And those stats that I just mentioned, it shows you all you need to know. Shohei Otani isn't just valuable to the Angels. Shohei Otani is the Angels. Since Mike Trout has been out, all of the production has come from Shohei. Every single bit of it. So let's just start right there. The team conversation, I'm tired of it. When it comes to baseball, the team conversation shouldn't exist in terms of, oh, so-and-so is on the better team. You know why? And I've said this before, in other sports, team and record matter because players can single-handedly put a team on their back and make that team good. Look, LeBron James in the NBA. He goes to Cleveland. Guess what? They're back to being a championship team. He goes to Miami. Guess what? Championship team. Goes to LA. Guess what? Championship team. When none of them were particularly close before he was there, he puts the team on his back and he allows them to be a better team. In the NFL, Tom Brady, okay? He's in New England, wins a bunch of championships there, leaves and goes to a Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that isn't very good, and he wins a Super Bowl there. And yes, the players around him got better. I know all that. This isn't a football show, but I know a lot about it. The team definitely got better around Tom Brady, but he specifically is the reason that they won a Super Bowl. In baseball, that's just not the case, and it's not possible for that to be the case because there's nine guys in a lineup, there's 25 guys on a roster, 26 sometimes, and, and it's not possible for one player to be the difference. So we cannot punish Shohei Otani for being on the team that he is on. If you take Shohei Otani 
off of the Angels, well, one, they're much worse. But if you put him on the Yankees without Aaron Judge, guess what? The Yankees are just as good, if not better, with Shohei. If you take Aaron Judge off of the Yankees and put him on the Angels, guess what? They still stink. So we're not going to punish the player for the team that he plays on. Let's start there first and foremost. Next up, Aaron Judge has all the hype. He's a New York Yankee. All the hype goes to him. All the hype in baseball is around him because of the the stretch he is on. And he could break the all-time record for home runs in a single season. Certainly by a, a New York Yankee, he could do that. So all the hype is there. I just feel like we're losing sight of what Shohei is doing. And and is it because of what he did last year? Sure. What he did last year, and now he's doing it again this year, arguably even better. Offensively, the numbers aren't there. People love to look at the offensive stats here. I'll argue with people all day, every day on social media. People love to argue the offensive stats. That's half of the story here with Shohei. So I truly believe this. Last year, if Vladimir Guerrero Jr. had won the Triple Crown, Shohei would have still won the MVP unanimously because the offensive stats are there, and they're close to Vladdy. Oh, my God. The offensive stats are close. Look at these home run numbers. Look at these RBI numbers. That's all very close. And he also pitches uh, MVP. But this year... Because the pitching numbers are the ones that are so much better. He's a top pitcher in the game of baseball. He's a top five pitcher in the American League right now. But the offensive numbers are quite a bit behind Aaron Judge. But still, offensively, compared to the rest of the league, he's above average. He's been really good. But because those numbers don't directly correlate to comparing with Aaron Judge, oh, Aaron Judge, the MVP. Uh Uh-uh. There's a whole nother aspect of the game. And I'm again here to say, PSA announcement here. It is not funny to make the joke that, oh, Aaron Judge has a 0.00 ERA. If I had a dollar for every time I saw that on Twitter in an argument within the MVP award, I would have a lot of dollars. It's a tired argument. It makes no sense. I even feel that it's ridiculous to address this, but Aaron Judge does not have a 0.00 ERA. His ERA is non-existent. N-A. Because he doesn't pitch. So that argument can go out the window, and, and people think they're being funny by saying it. Everybody knows Aaron Judge doesn't pitch, but he doesn't have an ERA, and it's not 0.00. It's non-existent, okay? Let's just get that one out of the way as well. The offensive numbers are really good. The pitching numbers are great. You combine the two of those, and you have the MVP. Offensively this year, Aaron Judge hasn't even been the the best offensive player. That's Jordan Alvarez. Jordan offensively has been better. Aaron Judge certainly has the, the home run numbers to boot, and it is certainly an impressive year. And if he continues on this pace, he could break the Yankees' record. But... Let's say he doesn't continue on this pace. Is it literally just the home run number we're pointing to that's the difference here? Because if it's not just the home run number, then the Jordan Alvarez argument comes into play here. You're telling me the number of home runs is the ultimate factor in MVP? No, it's not. And and this is coming from a guy, I hope Aaron Judge breaks the all-time record. I hope he does. I did a full deep dive into this on Monday, on the Monday episode. I did a full discussion about Aaron Judge and how impressive it is what he's doing. And this doesn't take away from that at all. I hope he breaks Roger Maris's record. I hope he hits 62 or more. I hope he breaks Barry Bonds' record and he hits 74 or more. Is that likely? No. But I I don't think that plays a factor in, in the MVP season. I do believe that Shohei is the most valuable player and the best player in the game of baseball. I really do. I truly believe that. I believe the MVP season, which in baseball, the MVP is the most amazing player, the map. And the MVP in baseball is who played the best. It's Shohei. And it's been Shohei. 
He does it both. He's doing it better than the majority of people on either side of the ball. That's a fact. Aaron Judge is having one of the greatest seasons of all time. It just so happens to be not even the greatest season that we've seen this year or the best season that we saw last year because the greatest season of all time came last year from Shohei Otani. And the second best, 1B of the greatest season of all time is happening right now in front of our eyes again from Shohei. He has a 2.80 ERA. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball, and he has 22 home runs. He hit another triple on Sunday. He's really fast. He does it all. It's remarkable. So this MVP discussion, it starts and ends right here for all the reasons I just said. The team discussion, out the window. That does nothing for me. The team he's on, it does nothing for me. The Yankees are better because Aaron Judge is on their team. They would also be better if Shohei Otani was on their team. So the team argument does nothing for me. Offensively, Shohei Otani has a better WRC+, plus, Carlos Correa's favorite stat, than Byron Buxton, Matt Olson, Giancarlo Stanton. On the mound, he has a better ERA than Garrett Cole, you Darvish, Kevin Gosman. Elites. Elites in the game. And on the mound again, he has the second best K per walk ratio, strikeout to walk ratio, in all of baseball behind only somebody named Shane McClanahan. That's it. McClanahan has been unbelievable this year. Shohei's only behind him in all of baseball. So you're looking at all all stars here. Buxton, Stanton, Garrett Cole. I mean, this is this is two all star players combined into one. It's that simple. I understand the argument this year. I do. I understand the Aaron Judge MVP argument. He's on the New York Yankees. He's got more homes than everybody. Home runs. Maybe more homes. He's about to when he gets paid a lot here at the end of this year. He's got more home runs than everybody. He's on the best team in baseball record wise. I get it. But we're not going to buy into the hype of the New York Yankees. And my fear here is that because Shohei did this last year, it's less impressive this year. And oh, Aaron Judge is also doing this. Let's vote for Aaron Judge. No, what he's doing this year is no less impressive than what he did last year. And it might arguably be even more because of what he's doing pitching wise this year. Do not get complacent with what we're watching from Shohei. He's the MVP this year. And everybody says, oh, well, if you're just going to say he's MVP this year, is he just going to be the MVP every year he pitches and hits? No, he's not. But every year. He has an ERA of 2.8, the second best strikeout to walk ratio, over 30 home runs. He's going to be the MVP, and he should, and he deserves to be. So that does it for the Shohei versus Aaron Judge argument. I'm sure we will have this argument and this discussion a lot more throughout the year, but that's where my mindset is at right now, and that does it for who I think will win MVP. And that also does it for this week's episode an addition of This Week in Otani News. All right, so now moving on to something I teased at the top of the show, but it's the beginning of August, meaning we're getting closer to the end of the season. So I want to update my top three MVP frontrunners in each league and top three Cy Young frontrunners in each league. So I'm going to head on over here to the board. We're going to get it in the wall, and we're going to start on the National League side of things. We'll start with MVP and Cy Young, both on the National League side. Now, this is my front runner, not the odds, not anything else other than my front runners for the awards. And we will start at number three for National League MVP. I have Freddie Freeman. The tear Freddie Freeman has been on lately gets him into this discussion. He is now in reach of the NL MVP discussion. After, I don't want to say a slower start to the year, but just a higher average. The power and the RBIs weren't quite there for him, but but now, now it is. I mean, it's really picked up in the month of July. He was fantastic. He was on my team of the month. 
And he's here at number three. Number two, Austin Riley. Austin Riley was my player of the month for all of July. He's now batting close to 300, 29 homers, 67 RBIs. His month of July was unbelievable. He broke the all-time Atlanta Braves record for extra base hits in a single month, passing Hank Aaron. That's how good he was in July. And he's just propelled himself into the conversation. The NL MVP, the race hadn't been super close for a while. But that gap is getting closer and closer because of what Austin Riley has been doing. And my NL MVP frontrunner as of right now, Paul Goldschmidt. How good has he been this year? How good has Paul Goldschmidt been from the beginning of the season? 24 homers, a one, an OPS over one on the year, 1.025, and a 333 average. Also homered in the All-Star game, which was fun to watch. But look, this is getting closer as of right now, Paul Goldschmidt. But on the year, what Austin Riley has been doing, I think really propels himself right up there close with Paul Goldschmidt in the National League MVP race. Freddie Freeman at three. Austin Riley at two, Paul Goldschmidt at number one. Let's move on to the Cy Young in the National League. My three front runners for National League Cy Young as of right now. Starting at number three, Joe Musgrove. Joe has been so good for San Diego. The Padres have been really good this year. He's been a big reason. The rotation's been a big reason, but he himself has really showed himself to be elite in this game. Last year was a really good year for him. This year, another one. He's becoming one of the elite pitchers in the game of baseball. Eight and four on the year, a 2.65 ERA, 104 strikeouts. I think he is third. At number two, Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns, back to back in El Cy Young. He's in that conversation. Eight and four, 2.31 ERA, 160 strikeouts. It's that cutter. That upper 90s cutter is just so good. He, he can pinpoint it. I talked to Pitching Ninja about it. It is perhaps the best pitch in baseball right now, and he is one of the best pitchers in baseball right now. So in terms of NL Cy Young front runners, I got him at number two. At number one, this one was easy. This award is Sandy Alcantara's to lose. Nine and four, an ERA under two, 1.99. 138 strikeouts. But for me, it's the longevity that he's shown. He pitches into the eighth inning regularly. He throws, he's very efficient, but he's also a workhorse for this team. He'll throw a lot of pitches. He'll throw a lot of innings. He has by far the most innings pitched in the league. He has an ERA under two while he's doing all that. He's throwing 100 mile an hour sinkers that are moving like crazy. He's the best pitcher in the league right now. And that's why I have him here at number one for NL Cy Young frontrunners. Let's move on to the American League now. We're going to start with MVP. And this discussion, it's a good one. We'll start at number three. At number three, Jordan Alvarez. In my opinion, Jordan's been the best hitter in baseball all year long. 312 average, 30 home runs, a 1.098 OPS. But those 30 home runs come in a time he missed a good bit of a good bit of time. I don't want to say a good bit, but he missed over a week there right around the All-Star game, and he's still at 30 home runs. When it comes to best hitter, it's Jordan. But moving on to number two, Aaron Judge. 300 on the year, 42 home runs, 91 RBIs already. There's no arguing that this is one of the greatest seasons that we've ever seen. He's on pace to break the Yankees' all-time single-season home run record. He's on, on pace to drive in over 140 runs. He's been unbelievable. Now, the home run record is in reach. Barry Bonds is 73. He's on pace, as of right now, to hit 67. Is 73 likely? No. Is it likely he breaks the all-time Yankees record? Yes. Now, do I believe that makes him the AL MVP front runner? I do not. And the reason for that is because at number one, the greatest show on earth, Shohei Otani. We have now seen over a year and a half of the greatest seasons of all time. 
What Shohei did last year was the best season we have ever seen. What he is doing this year is just as good, if not better. Last year, Shohei the pitcher wasn't as good as Shohei the pitcher this year. Last year, Shohei the hitter was a little better than Shohei the hitter this year. But it's still equally as valuable as a player, and he is the most valuable player in the game of baseball. He is two all-star players in one. How can you tell me that Aaron Judge is more valuable because he's going to break a home run record? You can't. I do believe what he's doing is incredible. I actually hope he breaks the record. I hope he breaks Barry Bonds' record. I don't think that happens. But even if it does, does it make him the MVP this year? If he breaks Barry Bonds' record, we can start having that conversation a little bit more. But if he breaks the all-time Yankees record, I still think, I still think Shohei Otani is the MVP of the league because he's two all-stars in one. It's that simple. That's how good he is. A 2.80 ERA on the pitcher's side. The best strikeout-to-walk ratio in all of baseball behind only Shane McClanahan. And offensively, 22 home runs. Top 10 in the American League in home runs. On pace for well over 30 home runs. If you have a 2.80 ERA and well over 30 home runs, you're the MVP of the league. You're the most valuable. I know the Yankees. I know the Yankees are a better team than the Angels. I know the Angels aren't very good, but I'm tired of the team argument. Shohei Otani isn't just valuable to the Angels. He is and has been the Angels since Mike Trout has been out. He's been their production. The fact that they're winning any games is because of him. At one point, he was 6-0 in a stretch of six starts on the mound. And the only games the Angels had won were the games he started on the mound. They lost every other game. That is value. Shohei Otani is the MVP of the American League. And that's why I have him here at number one. Moving on to the Cy Young Award. This Cy Young conversation is really, really good as well. Let's start here at number three. This guy has played himself into this conversation in a hurry. Dylan Cease, he should have been an all-star. The fact that he wasn't an all-star is outrageous. The month of July was remarkable, one of the greatest months in a long time. 4-1 and one on the mound, but a 0.61 ERA. He's now 10-4 and four on the year, a 2.03 ERA, and 154 strikeouts. Dylan Cease played himself from around in the top 10 best odds to, hey, he's definitely in that conversation for winning the Cy Young Award. Moving on to number two, Shane McClanahan of the Rays. McClanahan has been fantastic. In the first half of the year, he was numbers-wise the best pitcher in, in the American League for sure. And he has still been dominant. But he's not the, he's not the Cy Young Award winner. The start we just saw him have on Sunday wasn't great, um, so that bumped his numbers down a little bit. Uh, he's now over a 2 ERA. The strikeouts, all of the numbers are fantastic. This isn't a knock on Shane McClanahan. This is why he is at number two. The year he is having is fantastic. It is an unbelievable year, and there is a very good chance that he wins the first Cy Young Award of his young career. The young lefty throwing close to 100 miles an hour. He's dominant. And he deserves to be in that final discussion for AL Cy Young Award. But right now, the winner of that award, the front runner for the AL Cy Young Award, is Justin Verlander. He is now the lowest ERA in all of Major League Baseball, the most wins in all of Major League Baseball, and we could continue to go on. 14-3, and 1.81 ERA, 122 strikeouts. He is just 20 strikeouts away from passing Pedro Martinez on the all-time list. This year, he has passed Bob Gibson and John Smoltz on the all-time list. He's going to pass Pedro Martinez at some point. He is 39 years old, and these things shouldn't matter, but they do matter in terms of the voting. He is 39 years old, he hasn't pitched in almost two years, and he has come back and meant everything 
to the Houston Astros rotation. When they're struggling and they need a win, Justin's there. Seven innings, no earned runs. When they're doing well but that bullpen needs a rest, Justin has been there. Eight innings, one earned run, ten strikeouts. He has been an absolute workhorse for the team. He is up there in terms of innings pitched for the most in baseball. He has the best ERA in all of baseball, not just the American League, but the National League. Sandy Alcantara has been fantastic. Justin has passed him in ERA. He has the most wins. This is all coming off of two years of him not pitching. What he is doing is Cy Young worthy. He is the front runner for American League Cy Young, and it's clear cut and dry. Shane McClanahan is having a fantastic year. Dylan Cease is having a fantastic year. The consistency that Justin has shown start after start after start is unbelievable. This is the best I have seen him look in his career, and that's including the 2011 year where he won the MVP award. He's throwing 99. He's close to 100 miles an hour as a starter. This is what he was doing at the beginning of his career. He was dominating. He was throwing seven, eight, nine innings, and he was throwing 93, 94, 95 early in those games. And when he needed it, he'd reach back and 100 was there. And we're seeing that all over again. When he needs it, he can reach back and 99.3 miles an hour is there. He's just different. It reminds me of Justin, the MVP award winner. That's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing the Justin of old, the Justin pre-Tommy John surgery, pre-pre-Tommy John surgery, the Justin even before Tommy John was really good. By the way, his record with the Houston Astros is 57 and 18 since he got traded there in 2017. 57 and 18. But even before Tommy John, he wasn't this dominant. This is MVP Justin that we're seeing. This year has been unbelievable. And he is, right now, the front runner for AL Cy Young Award. Dylan Cease, Shane McClanahan, Justin Verlander, all having fantastic years, and they are my top three for Cy Young favorites right now. But let's move on back over here. Producer Rhea is out here with me now for a fun little buy or sell segment. I don't know what these are going to be, but just another way to talk about some topics and you're going to throw me some stuff and I'm either going to buy them or I'm going to sell them. I'm excited. Let's see, uh, you know, how much you buy and then how much you decide to sell. Let's do it. All right. So first buy or sell, Mariners should worry about Julio Rodriguez being on IL. I'm buying that. That it does worry me. Julio is is the heartbeat of that team. He is so much fun, and he is quickly becoming one of my favorite players in the game of baseball. It's worrisome that he is out now. Now his his injury thankfully isn't season ending. He hurt his wrist and ends up getting X rays. He came out of that game, got X rays. X rays came back negative but he is still on the IL. He was put on the IL. He's not going to be able to swing a bat for at least five days. It worries me. So what do you do there? What do you do in the outfield? Because there were some other injuries as well. Dylan Moore. Do you call up Jared Kelnick, who hasn't been good in the big leagues? I don't know. But they're in the midst of a playoff push. They're on the edge of being a playoff team. You can sense it. You can smell it for the first time in over 20 years. And now the heartbeat of the team, your 21-year-old rookie phenom is on the IL. Not at a very good time. Right around the trade deadline, you acquire Luis Castillo, the best pitcher on the market, and it's all systems to go. Best pitcher on the market. We have a great offense. Let's go. Well, now Julio gets hurt. You're going to have to scramble to find... A replacement you can't replace him so I'm buying I'm worried do I do I think they make the playoffs still I do but during this stretch it's going to be vital what can they do in this 10 
Hopefully it's the minimum game stretch without Julio. I don't know. But if they go two and eight, nightmare. If they can go five and five, six and four, you, you've survived. But I am worried about it. Bye. Well, the J-Rod show has been fun to watch, so hopefully he is back with the Mariners soon. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right, next by or so. The Yankees end the season with the best record in MLB. The Yankees have had the most wins in baseball all year long. They've had the best record for the strong majority of the year. And they were on pace to break the all-time record, which was from those Mariners. I am going to sell that they end the season with the best record. Um, I, I actually, I think it's going to be the Dodgers that end up with the best record. Now, they're in the National League, which, the, they're in the National League West, which isn't as good as the AL East. Um, they also have, of everybody, the Dodgers have the easiest schedule in all of baseball, the 30th easiest schedule. Now, this is no knock on the team. The team is fantastic. But if I had to predict, the two teams are very close right now, record-wise. Win percentage, it's, it's neck and neck. The Dodgers actually have the better win percentage. The Yankees have the most wins. I think the Dodgers end up with the best record in baseball. So I'm going to sell. Uh, they also haven't been playing great. 13-13 and 13 in the month of July. Pretty close to 500 baseball if you do the math. So I'm going to sell. Nice. I'm surprised I couldn't hear the control room like cheering from the back when you said that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, next by or so. At least five teams finish with at least 100 wins. Five teams. All right, let's think that let's think through this one. Yankees, yes. Astros, yes. Dodgers, yes. So we're at 3 there. 3 for sure. Mets, Mets are pretty close, okay? So I did a little bit of thinking of, about this recently, actually. The Tampa Bay Rays won 100 games last year on the nose. 100 on the nose is a win percentage of 614, okay? 614. So the Mets are currently on pace to win over 100 games. Their win percentage is like 630, 640 in that range. So I'm going to say the Mets do it as well. I really like the Mets. So that's four. This is tough. This is where the, the Braves come into play here. Um, really, probably just the Braves are the only other team that could, that could get there. The Blue Jays have been really good, but that division, they just all beat up on each other. I don't think they get to 100. I don't think the Braves get there. I'm going to sell. I think the Mets end up with 100 to 102 wins, and I think the Braves end up like 98, 99 in that range. So that's my prediction. I'm selling because I think the Braves get to 99 wins. I, I think Yankees, Astros, Dodgers, Mets all get there. I think the Braves end up in the very upper, upper 90s. So for that reason, I'm going to sell. All right, fair enough. So next buy or sell. Coming to Sunday, Luis Arreyes currently leads MLB with a .334 batting average. Buy or sell, he'll win the MLB batting title. Oh, I'm going to buy that. This guy is just, there's not many batting average hitters anymore. There's not many Tony Gwynn type guys. Uh, you see a lot more swing and miss, a lot of power. Luis Arreyes is, is, is an average guy. He is not an average guy. He is a batting average guy. He's not average. He's above average. He's very, very good, and he's just a different sort of player than we've ever seen. I was talking to John Smoltz recently at the All-Star game, and I asked him, hey, if you wanted one person up, bottom of the ninth, you're down a run, base is loaded, you want one person up at the plate. He didn't say Aaron Judge. He didn't say Jordan Alvarez. He didn't say Mike Trout. He said Luis Arias. And that's just because he's going to he's going to get a hit. He's going to put the ball in play. You know that. I'm going to buy that he finishes with the best batting average in baseball. All right, so last buy or sell. 
The Giants become sellers at the deadline. Mm. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. It's tough to say. They were really good last year. They won the NL West last year in an incredible battle with the Dodgers. Won well over 100 games, but it's not the, it's not the same team. It's not. And that team last year performed to the best of the best of their possible ability. And this year they've lost guys. Buster Posey's not there. They've had some injuries, and it's just not the same. So are they within reach of a wild card? Sure. I just, I don't see it. I think they should sell. I think they should sell. I think they should sell Carlos Rodon. I think they should get rid of um, offensively some of the some of the guys they have. I, I think, yeah, I'm going to buy. And that's tough to say. I want the Giants to be good. I want them to compete in that NL West with the Padres and the Dodgers, but it's not happening. And I put them in, in sort of a similar boat as the Red Sox. Is there a possibility that you could get a wild card spot if things go great and you win a bunch of games? Yes. Is the possibility high? No. But is your team capable of doing damage in the playoffs? I, I don't think so. I don't think they have what it takes to do damage in the playoffs. I think it would take a, a big turnaround for them to even make the playoffs. And for that reason, I think they should sell. Wait, I'm they should sell, but I'm buying that they should sell. Wow, that became confusing. So that was the last buy or sell. I believe that does it for buy or sell. That also does it for this fun Tuesday episode of Flipping Bats. If you're listening early in the morning, we will be doing a live trade deadline special episode right at the trade deadline later in the day. If you're listening after that, well, I hope you enjoyed that. But that will be later today. The trade deadline is here. This is going to be a fun, crazy day. Make sure you're around for that. Keep Twitter open. I will be scrolling all day long, and then I will be coming right here to studio to do a live show. Make sure you're like, subscribe, anywhere you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, any of that. Also, follow us on all social media. We have a lot of fun on social media, at Flippin' Bats Pod everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok. We're crushing it on TikTok right now. Shout out Javion. Shout out Kiara. Y'all are crushing the TikTok game. And we're on YouTube. Flipping Bats Pod. You can watch every episode on YouTube. That does it for this Tuesday. Otani Tuesday episode of Flipping Bats. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will see you tomorrow for another episode of Flipping Bats. Peace.